Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 15. Now question 15, use of the data booklet is relevant to this question. The reaction of methylpropane with a halogen, X2, produces a halogenal alkene. So the reaction is here. Which statement about this reaction is correct? So for option A, C4H9X is formed in one of the propagation reactions. Option B, small amounts of CH3, bracket 3, C dot, which represents a carbon radical, are produced in a termination reaction. C, the bromine-bromine bond is weaker than the chlorine-chlorine bond, and so the reaction with bromine is more exothermic. And finally, option D, the initiation reaction produces a halide ion, which is reactive. Now you notice the statements given in the options are suggesting to us that we have to refer to the mechanism for alkene. So obviously the topic tested in this question will be under alkene and we have to link it to the mechanism which is our free radical substitution. So maybe what we can do is let us just run through the mechanism for this metal propane and let us consider how do I form this product, this halogenal alkene product running through this mechanism. Now free radical substitution for alkene is actually pretty straightforward. First step, I'll have initiation step. And this is where your XX bond will break homolytically in the presence of UV light. So this UV light, it is an energy source. It breaks this XX bond equally. And I'm forming two halogen radical. So this dot will represent a radical. Radical is neutral, but your halogen radical, it has an odd number of electron. So therefore, this guy is very reactive and it kickstarts the reaction. That's why we call this the initiation step. Now, the next step is what we call the propagation step. Propagation step, the radical, which is reactive, will actually target your alkene and it picks up one of the hydrogen. Now, in order for me to show the product that is being formed, because the product that the question is forming is your CH3, bracket 3, CX, so what we will do is we will target this specific CH bond that is next to the carbon at position 2, the carbon at the center. So I'm going to target this CH bond at the center so I can form the product that is mentioned in the question. And what this X will do is it will form a bond with your hydrogen. The CH bond will break homolytically. Carbon will take back its own electron. Hydrogen will take its electron and form uh, bond with your halogen radical. So I'm forming HX and I form this carbon radical here. This carbon radical that is bonded to three metal groups. And this now becomes the reactive species. Now this is the radical. This guy is the reactive guy and it takes part in the next step which is targeting our halogen. So what you do is you will break the halogen-halogen bond. Again, XX bond will break homolytically. One of the halogen will form a bond with your carbon to form your CX bond, and this is the product that the question mentioned. The other halogen will take back its own electron. I form back our halogen radical. So we call this a propagation step because when a radical meets something stable, you form a stable compound and generate another radical. So the number of reactive species stays the same and the reaction will continue and the reaction will propagate. So as long as it is radical meeting a stable compound, I'll always get back another radical and I'll always form back the same number of reactive species and the reaction will continue. That's why we call this a propagation step. And for free radical substitution, the bulk of the process is actually propagation step because the probability of a radical meeting a stable compound is significantly higher than the probability of a radical meeting another radical, which will lead us to the termination step. Now, what happens when two radicals meet each other? They'll form a stable bond between them and it marks the end of the reaction for the radical, the total number of reactive species actually will decrease. And when I consider termination step, when we draw the termination step, it's actually quite easy. You just choose any two radicals that you can form in the propagation step, combine them together. So two half arrows joined together means that I'm forming a bond between the carbon and your halogen. So from the CX bond, this will be a stable compound. You notice the total number of reactive species decreases. That's why we consider this a termination step. So Another possible product that we can form is your carbon radical meeting another carbon radical 
to form this carbon-carbon bond. And this compound here, where the number of carbon actually doubles. At the beginning, my reactant actually only has four carbon. This product that is possible has a total of eight carbon. So it is possible for me to form this guy in the termination step. And the probability of a termination step is significantly lower because the chances of a radical meeting another radical in the reaction mixture is significantly lower. So this is just a very brief overview involving free radical substitution. And based on this discussion, then we can proceed on to answer each of these options, see which one of them is the correct one. So how about statement A? Now statement A, C4H9X is formed in one of the propagation reactions. And based on what we have done previously, when we go through the propagation step, remember what happens is your halogen radical will form a bond with a hydrogen. You break the CH bond, you generate a carbon radical. Then this carbon radical subsequently forms a bond with your halogen, regenerate your halogen radical, and it forms this CX bond. Now this carbon, which is bonded to three methyl group and a halogen, is equivalent to CH3 bracket 3. CX is also equivalent to C4H9X if I just focus on the molecular formula. So A is true. It is possible for me to form this guy here, C4H9X, in the propagation step. So this is A. Most likely this guy is the answer. Statement A is true. Now how about the rest of them? Let us just run them through. Involving B, small amounts of your carbon radical are produced in a termination reaction. Now this statement is actually not true. Termination step is when two radicals meet each other to form a stable compound. Termination step will not generate radicals. And the radicals are actually being formed during the propagation step. So we know that statement B is not true. So B is false, and therefore this is not the answer. Next, how about option C? Now option C is a little bit more troublesome. We actually have to do a fair bit of calculation. C says that the bromine-bromine bond is weaker than the chlorine-chlorine bond. So reaction with bromine is more exothermic. So we actually have to show, and that we change for this reaction, which one is more exothermic, which is uh, less exothermic. Is it the reaction with bromine or the reaction with chlorine? Now, if I look at the overall reaction, I can actually calculate and double change for this reaction by considering the total number of bonds broken versus the total number of bonds formed. So if I compare the reactant versus the product, we should be able to figure out that during this reaction, what is happening is I'm breaking one CH bond. Bond energy is given here for one zero, which we can refer to the data booklet. I'm breaking the halogen-halogen bond in the reactant. So the bond that is broken is my CH bond, and the bonds broken will be XX bond, and bond energy for bromine-bromine is 193. Bond energy for chlorine-chlorine bond is 244. So based on option C, option C says that bromine-bromine bond is weaker than chlorine-chlorine bond. So actually this is true. Huh? Bond energy for BrBr -Br is only 193. Chlorine, chlorine bond is 244. So bond energy for bromine, bromine bond is smaller. This means that the bond is weaker, less energy is required for me to break that bond. But we also have to consider the products that's being formed. And what we have to do is we have to actually go and calculate the NW change of the process. Now, if I look at the bonds that are formed, I'm forming CX bond and HX bond. So bonds form CX bond involving carbon bromine bond, this bond energy is 280. Carbon chlorine bond bond energy is 340. Involving HX bond that is being formed, bond energy for HBr is 366, bond energy for HCl is 431. So you notice all these values are different. Involving CX bond, your CBr bond bond energy is actually smaller than the bond energy for CCl bond. And involving HX bond, bond energy for HBr is also smaller than bond energy for HCl. So just by comparing the bond energy for your bromine-bromine versus your chlorine-chlorine bond, it's not sufficient for me to conclude that the reaction involving bromine is more exothermic. So we actually need to really go and calculate the NW change for the particular process. It's not difficult, it's just a little bit tedious for one of the options uh, in an MCQ. So let us consider the reaction with bromine. And I have to consider NW change of the reaction with this formula here that we have learned in energetics the summation of all the bonds that are being broken, the energy involved, minus the summation of the bond energy involving all the bonds that are formed. So basically, this is just bond broken minus bonds formed. Involving bromine as the reactant, this 410 will represent the 
bond energy for your CH bond that we're breaking. 193 is the bond energy for bromine bromine bond that we're breaking. Minus this 2A0 is the bond of your CBr that we are forming. And 366 is the HBr bond that we are forming. So I can calculate and double change for this reaction. This is minus 43 kJ per mole. And double change of the reaction involving bromine. Now how about the reaction involving chlorine? Involving chlorine, same idea, bond break minus bond form. So I double change for the process will be 410, which is the CH bond energy. 244, which is the chlorine-chlorine bond energy, minus 340, which is CCl bond energy, and 431, which is the HCl bond energy. So I can calculate and double change for this reaction. Turns out to be a minus 117 kilojoule per mole. And if I compare these two guys, we actually realize that the NW change involving the reaction with chlorine is actually more exothermic. The reaction with bromine is less Exothermic. So if I come back to statement C, which says that the reaction with bromine is more exothermic, actually this statement is not true. This statement is false. So this option C is not difficult. It's just a little bit tedious. We have to do quite a fair bit of calculation. So it's a little bit time consuming, but we should still be able to figure this out. Now, finally for D, for D, the initiation reaction produces a halo ion, which is reactive. Obviously, this is not true. The mechanism is free radical substitution. The reactive species has to be a free radical, which is neutral, but it has an odd number of electrons. So we should be able to rule this out. Straight away, the reactive species will not be halide ion. The free radical, which is neutral, is the reactive species. So D is definitely wrong. So we've already run through the options, A, B, C, D. So which statement about this reaction is correct? It should be option A. In one of the propagation steps, I will be able to form C4H9X. Alright, so that was the discussion involving this question, targeting free radical substitution for alkenes. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.